Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to give a detailed walkthrough of the process of doing the rolling shutter analysis to determine exactly how much rolling shutter affects a particular camera. So the particular shot I'm using is from a GH4. So I'm going to walk through this process in some detail. There's a separate tutorial that talks about rolling shutter more and looks at the different values you get and so on. This is just to show the actual tracking of the thing and cleanup and so on and some more detail for folks. So first let's talk about shooting and you see that I've got the camera on a tripod and I run first in one direction and then back in the other. The key point is that we do have the camera both speeding up and slowing down. We've got all the objects pretty much, all the trackable features are in the distance and that's to minimize the effect of any offset to our nodal point. Normally to do a perfect tripod shot you want the nodal point of the camera's lens to be located exactly at the point that you're rotating on the tripod. It's not, not generally going to happen the way that you minimize the effect of any offset like that is to keep everything in the distance to the extent possible as we've done here. And notice that we're shooting where we've got a whole bunch of detail all the way to the edges of the frame. So we do want to have features all the way around in order to produce unbiased data and, and help this process work as well as possible. You see at the one end of the shot there's a little area with nothing but pretty much we're, we've got the whole frame filled up with things that are moving nicely back and forth. So I'll point out that the rolling shutter analysis process can work with any kind of shot. It doesn't have to be a shot like this but in order to produce the best possible accuracy which we what we're trying to get this is this is the way to go. And another point to get this we've got you know a, a fairly long focal length on the lens which you know makes it easier to get this kind of shot that's uh, all filled up and it also minimizes the amount of distortion in the lens as well that is something that we want to minimize to avoid mucking up the of the effect of the rolling shutter and also we're going to keep the shutter time reasonably short to minimize blur during the more rapidly moving sections of the shot. So here I think this is uh, 1 640th of a second. So it's, it's reasonably short. And we don't want to get too extreme on how quickly we move back and forth. That'll make the tracking difficult in addition to creating blur. And we, we're really just interested in, in being able to track it as easily as possible. So you don't have to go too, too fast. Might be two or three seconds of motion in each direction. So nothing, nothing too extreme. So during the setup, we do want to make sure that we get the right frame rate because the, the final value is going to come out as a time in seconds. We need the right frame rate set up when we had that shot setup dialog open. And now we'll start with the actual tracking of it. So we're going to go to the features panel and click on the advanced button and change some of the settings here. We're just going to increase the number of trackers and the minimum number of trackers per frame a bunch to uh, give us some more data to work with since we're, we're definitely sweeping everything on and off the image quite extensively. So we'll go back to the summary panel. We'll say it's on a tripod. We're just going to run the auto tracker. You don't need to, to actually do the solve. So now here we got a collection of trackers. You can see that there's a nice uniform coverage. If you've, if you've had too fast of a pan in your shot, you'll see that in those rapidly moving sections you can lose track because it's just too much motion from frame to frame. So I don't want to get too extreme there. So this is a, a nice reasonable start. We're going to start with a little cleanup now. The first thing I'm going to do is just 
select anything that's too close. There's just a, a little telescope thing and chair that are a little closer than the rest of the stuff. So I'm just going to take those things out. We just, we just want as much of a nice tripod shot as possible because that is the kind of solve that we're going to do. And then next step, we're going to go and, and do actual detailed tracker cleanup. And we're going to do that with camera and grass view. And I'm going to go and select all the trackers and I'm turn off the background. Now you see, because it's this nice, super clean shot, you know, everything is really following along the same curves there as long as everything's going well. And all these other little things are things where there are problems. So we just want to go through and, and clean those up, again, in the interest of getting the best possible final result. So I'm going to start out with the uh, glitch fixing tool and where we see these double-sided things like that. That's just a single frame that's bad. So I'm holding down control, which puts it into isolate mode. I'm going to click on the leading edge of that. And now in this case, they see it's actually several frames in a row. So it's a more serious sort of thing. So let's go. We'll, we'll take that tracker and we'll just truncate it at that point. Just turn it off. Lock it back up. We'll do control A to get everything back. So now we still got that glitch detection, um, glitch fixing. So these little tails in this direction can be just deleted. The one in the other direction is a bit more difficult. So now let's go. We, we just have other kinds of problems now. So I'm just going to switch to the isolation tool. Again, here's something that it went off all together there right as it was going off the edge of the screen. So again, I'm just going to unlock it. I can actually do that one more frame. So we just work through our Jeffrey and Curtis down some of these. And when it occurs at the beginning, I need to actually go to the frame before. That's the you know, it's, it's valid for one frame, and then the velocity curve that I'm looking at, it doesn't appear to the second frame. So to go and take this out, I want to start the first frame that it's valid. I'm going to unlock it, drop it off, roll it forward a couple of frames, and turn it back on, and lock it back up. So... You can see this is a reasonably straightforward process. That guy, I don't know, that is a different one. Thought maybe it was the same one, but no. So there may be a f few minor little things in there still, but basically we've got it cleaned up pretty well. Let me just take this guy off. So now we've got that data cleaned up. Everything is, is really pretty smooth. And now we're ready to go and actually run the, the process. So. To actually be able to, to run the, the rolling shutter analysis tool, you need to have, first you need to have the rolling shutter analysis script itself. You can just look on your script menu and, and look for rolling shutter analysis. If you don't have that yet, you can go to the customer support area, the customer only area, and download. There's a little package of stuff there with uh, that script and a slightly augmented version of the SciPy Python library and some directions. 
and you need to get that installed and you also need to get uh, Python installed as well. There is a separate tutorial on getting the set up with Python done as well. So you might need to get that done. But once you do that, you can just go and start up the rolling shutter analysis script. And it goes chunking along here for a bit of time. And I'll point out that here I've used the python.exe version, which produces this debugging window. If, if I use Python w.exe, then uh, there wouldn't be this window. And you'd just be looking down here to see how, how it's making out. So this Python display window is only available this way on Windows. So kind of churns along for a bit here. So we'll just cut out and let it do its thing. Just to point out, if you decide at some point that you need to terminate this process early on Windows, you can simply close that Python window and that will cause the process to stop. Okay, as you can see, we're coming down the home stretch here. Only got a few more to go. So we're running through, you know, 66 different solves to find the best possible value. And now at the end, you know, you'll see a little summary information in that little console window. And it goes and it does a, a resolve at that last best value. So this window is up for about 10 seconds at the end, and then it's going to close up all by itself. And now you've got the little information on a note that uh, tells you what the optimal rolling shutter value is. And, you know, it was put out there on the shot setup panel. You know, here's the rolling shutter value enabled and sitting down here on the panel. So it's, it's used for subsequent solves, and you can see that it's, it's there as well. So once we've done that, we can just do a quick little rolling, a quick little tracker cleanup. And you'll notice there are still a couple of trackers that show up as being a problem that have higher errors than the rest. You know, these are some, I guess, that are probably switched around between the different tree branches and maybe some of those spots in the grass. So the thing to do is, in fact, to go and kill these things off and now go and run the rolling shutter script again because now you've got finally the ultimately clean data. And that will change the, the value maybe a small amount, uh, but you'll get the best possible value out of it. So... Just one other thing to point out. I'm not going to do that last solve here at this point in time. But just to point out, you know, if you go and you look during the high rate of motion parts of the shot, you will see the difference between the 2D position and the, the 3D position. So, you know, basically this guy here should be sitting over here if it was being compensated for the rolling shutter effect. But the camera view doesn't, doesn't compensate on the fly for the rolling shutter effect. Only the solver does. But this is showing you, you know, here's, here's what it, what's happening here in Synthize. But if you're, if you're displaying, if you're rendering new images, in Maya or whatever, and compositing them back, they will be subject to these same errors as well. That unless your rendering package takes the rolling shutter problem into account also, that it will be, you know, putting things at, at slightly the wrong spot. So that's why this is a problem, and, and that, that's true not just Again, not just for pans, but it's true for any kind of, of motion in the shot. 
Um, it'll be in different degrees, but you know this is a fair number of pixel difference that you see here. So even if it's a couple of pixels, you know that that's still significant from a match moving standpoint. So again, you know, whenever possible, if you can go with a camera that that's got a global shutter, uh, you're ahead. So thanks for watching.